Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a button property using Python API. To get started, I'll go to the Modeling tab. If you do not have access to Modeling tab, you can create an add-on to complete this tutorial. I'll now create a new component, add a box or block feature. I'll now click the Behaviors drop-down menu here and then click Python script to add that behavior and open its editor. We're going to create the property in the component of our script. We don't need these lines of code here. I will delete them. Let's now get the component object of the script. I'll write comp equals get component. Before we create the property, let's see if it already exists in the component. I'll write prop equals comp dot get property. This allows you to find a property by name. Let's look for a property in the component called test button. If the property does not exist, we have to create it. I'll write if not prop, prop equals comp dot create property. This allows you to create a property of a given type and name. The type for a button property is vc underscore button. Let's now name the property test button. And we have to accept the default constraint. So whenever you're creating button properties, you have to use API to define what happens when you click the button. Because the property's value is actually null or none, so there's no point in sending the value here. Instead, you have to use an event called onChange. So prop.onChange. This allows you to assign an event listener or callback function. So let's do a test function real quick when we click the button. And for our test, let's actually show a message box. We will need the application object to do that, so I'll write app equals get application. Let's now define the function of test. And the first argument that's passed to it is the property that was changed. And we'll use our application object with a method called message box. So this allows you to create a custom message box. Let's keep it simple and just show hello world in the message box. Let's now test, so I'll compile the code. Go to the component graph panel and select the properties checkbox here. Underneath the root node, expand properties, and yes, there's our test button. It has the null or none value, but if you go to the property task pane and click the button here, you can see, yes, there's our hello world message box. Likewise, you can select the root node to select the component, and in the component properties panel, there's our test button, and if you click it, you get the same result, hello world. Let's see how this button property works in a feature. So let's comment out this code here and just save it for our reference. And if we notice in the 3D world, we do have this block feature here. So let's use that to create a new button property. All right, block equals comp dot get feature in the script. This allows you to find a feature in the node, which is in this case the root node of the component. We're looking for a feature called block. And now we're going to use the block feature object, not the component, to create that button property. All right, prop equals block, ho ho, get property. Let's look for a property in the block feature called test button. So remember, we're using the block feature, not the component, to find and create a property called test button. So if that property does not exist in the block feature, we have to create it, which is why I will write if not prop. Prop equals block dot create property. Let's create the button in the feature. So its type will be VC underscore button, and we'll write its name as test button. We still have to use the onChange event to define what happens when we click the button in the feature. So I'll write prop.onChanged equals, in this case, whenever we click the button, let's have the application show us the feature in the 3D world. So my test function will be show me, and I'll define it now. The first argument will be the property that's changed, and in our function, we can get the application object, so I'll write app equals get application. I'll then use the selection manager, so I'll write sm equals app dot selection manager. 
This allows you to select objects in the 3D world. So I'll write sm.setSelection. And we want to select the feature, in this case the block. But if you already have the block feature selected, you could use a method called getSelection. And now, once we know that the feature is selected, we then want to use a command for filling our view with that feature. So we're going to use a net command. I'll, call, I'll write cmd equals app.findCommand. We're looking for a command called net command, and this allows you to call register.nAPI commands. So when we execute our net command, we want to execute a net command called fill selected. And this is the same command that's executed when you click this button here in the 3D World toolbar. Let's now compile our code. And if I minimize my script and go to the Feature Properties panel, we can see, yes, there's our test button. Let's actually navigate away from our feature so we can't see it anymore, but it is selected. And when I click my test button, oh ho, notice I can now see the feature. Let's actually change the length of our block to 5,000, maybe give it a height of 6,000. And notice we can't see the entire feature, so let's click our test button again. And yes, it's now filled our view with that selected feature, so we can see everything about it. To quickly review, let's go to our Help tab. Click Python API to open the reference. And let's start by going to VC property. Now let's go to methods. And we can see that underneath methods there's our events, and we have that on changed event. So we're using this to show a message box. And we did that using the application. So let's go to VC application, click methods, and you want to scroll all the way down until you find a section called miscellaneous, which is right here. So if we scroll, we can see there's the method called message box, which we used to show a message box. And then we also used a command from the application. So if we scroll up and find a section called command, we use this method to find a command by name that's registered to the application. Now don't get confused here. You want to use the find command, not the get commands method here, because the get commands method will return a list of commands, and you don't want that. You want to find the exact command you need. So from there, let's go to VC command, click available standard commands, and if we scroll down, we can see there's our net command. And we use this to call a command by name, which was fill selected. Let's close this out, and this completes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com, and I hope you have a wonderful day.